Panera Bread's charged lemonade blamed for a second death. Dennis Brown, 46, drank three of the highly caffeinated beverages before suffering a cardiac arrest in October, according to the suit. Every Panera charged lemonade has 11 and a half cans of... Isn't Panera bread for, like, boomers and geriatrics? What 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 is the market? What is the, like, demo overlap here? Hello? Caffeinated charged lemonade is responsible for a death of a man in Florida. Now, the family of Dennis Brown says he had three cups of the charged lemonade, then suffered a cardiac arrest later that day. Okay, I'm going to open with my default. Okay, I'm going to open by being contrarian, and then we're going to learn a little bit more, okay? On one hand, I think that the stuff that gets served to people should be safe and blah, 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 all that gay cook bullshit, okay? Now let's get to the real point, okay? Look around, find out. I'm very sorry, okay? If, you know, if a guy wants to inhale 16 Big Macs and then die of a cardiac arrest, like, you know, how much of this is the Big Mac and how much of this is the you inhaling 16 car Like, you're a f***ing adult. What are you doing? It's, it's advertised as a super high caffeine dr Okay. Whatever, let's move on. This could this could be like the the McDonald's like hot coffee lawsuit where it where everyone made fun of her because it's like, wow, you can sue people for anything these days. Sued for getting hot coffee and spilling it on yourself. And then you read that the coffee was so hot and it was heated by lasers. It was so hot that it fused her labia together when she when she spilled it on herself. And it's like, hmm, I don't think coffee should fuse labia when you spill it on yourself. I think that it should sting a lot and maybe leave a first degree burn is the thing. It actually wasn't advertised as turbo caffeinated. Really? Wait, how are they advertising it? I guess we'll find out soon. The lawsuit claims a large 30 ounce charged lemonade from Panera contains about nine, 390 milligrams of caffeine. So just for context, you need to drink 11 and a half cans of Coke to get an equal amount. How much is in a five hour energy? Hold on. This has uh, 200 milligrams. So, so yeah, two of these is one Panera charged lemonade. Of caffeine. For more on this, I do want to bring in our NBC News legal analyst, Danny Savayos now. Uh, Danny, look, this is the second lawsuit we're talking about in terms of Panera. Yeah, let me see if I can find this. Hold on. P Panera charged lemonade. Because if, if, if the lawsuit and you guys are correct and... This is not being advertised as like the, the way that a, a shop would advertise like a heart attack burger. You know, like if, if, if they're stamping labels all over it to indicate what it is, then that's one thing. Okay. It says it has a lot of caffeine right here. The problem is, I don't think most people know what an amount of caffeine is. Like... It, you know, this is pretty abstract unless you specifically know. Like, I just had to check my five-hour energy to know how much this is relatively, you know. That is a lot of caffeine, but I think that, like, there should be a big warning saying this is, like, a super, super, like, high-caffeine drink. Please do not drink a lot, a lot of these if you have heart issues or whatever else. Um, what What's the other lawsuit? A stu the, She died! This girl died. Panera warns about charged lemonade after a lawsuit alleges role in college student's death. Um, UPenn student Sarah Katz died of a cardiac arrest after unknowingly consuming the high cat. Yeah, because if you... I can see that if you're at a Panera and you have a cup or whatever, you just see this and it's like, oh, hell yeah, mango yuzu citrus, lemonade. And then you just have it, you know? Yeah, th this should be advertised like big warning alarm bell, like big caffeine mega drink. Don't drink more than one, you know. Yeah, this is pretty bad. All right, I take back my previous statement. The lawsuit seems pretty justified. Era here over this particular drink, and I want to pull up uh, a piece of their statement. There was no warning at all for the first lawsuit. Nice, nice. 
statement if we can. And it says that Dennis Brown's unfortunate passing was not caused by one of the company's products. And I'm skipping down to further part of the statement where it says, in part, Panera stands firmly by the safety of our products. What is the potential liability for a restaurant in this particular situation? As, as a plaintiff's attorney, I bring cases similar to this sometimes. This is akin to what's called a products liability case. Uh, this is going to be a tough case for the plaintiffs. First, they need to prove causation. You see in that statement, Panera takes the position that there was no causation. In other words, the mere fact that he drank something with a lot of caffeine, Panera will argue, was not the medical cause of his death, nor was it a substantial factor. That's a bold claim to make on your second lawsuit. Uh, part two is the idea of misuse. Was this misuse of a product foreseeable? Because the reality, Morgan, is that every substance in the world, water is toxic. The question is quantity. I drink enough water, that becomes toxic. So the argument becomes, uh, the secondary argument is, look, even if the caffeine could have contributed to his death. This is a consumer who misused hmm. the product. I think that's a tougher argument to make because we live in a society now that is over caffeinated and people end up drinking probably more coffee than they should. And that's pretty foreseeable. This is probably my third cup of coffee today. It's not water. It actually is coffee, which, again, toxic in the right quantity. Oh, well, you're saying you know a third cup of coffee or in Panera terms, you're finishing your first glass of lemonade. <laughs> this question being foreseeable if panera then pulls this drink from the counters does that sort of look bad when they go to court this is a great question and this is a principle in the law called subsequent remedial measures and they are generally inadmissible and the reason is public policy because as you can imagine if a company pulls a drink, doesn't that seem like, hey, now we acknowledge that it's bad? Some wrongdoing. Yeah, but the public policy, and this has been around for a long time, is that subsequent fixes. Oh, yeah. Apparently, the average amount of caffeine in a cup of coffee is 95 milligrams, which means that one of those big lemonades would actually be four cups of coffee. So a five hour energy is is um, is two coffees. So I have three coffees every morning. I feel OK of a dangerous situation are not admissible against the defendant because if they not even were, admissible. not admissible and because if they were Morgan then no one would have any incentive to remedy a dangerous situation you might leave you know the broken glass on the floor at the supermarket and say well if we clean it up then they're going to say we knew it was dangerous similarly here if this was a dangerous drink and you use that against the company after they pull it they would have no incentive to take it off the stand. Hmm. So that is a public policy thing that has developed over centuries. I feel like I just earned a legal degree. Danny Ceballos, as always, the best. I don't think so. Um, yeah, I think that guy said a lot of shit without saying anything. Yeah, I wish I could watch the legal legal thing because I want to know more, but it's copyright probably, you know, I don't want to steal content. It would just be me watching. Product liability, go to around 923. I, I mean, this might be content ID like immediately. The Panera failed to warn consumers about the potential risks that may occur when the drink is consumed. In strict liability law, inadequate or non-existent warnings are considered a type of product defect. However, manufacturers only have an obligation to warn consumers of risks that are not considered obvious. Okay, I don't know why I thought that there would be anything quick at that specific point in the video, because I've watched legal legal videos and you have to watch the whole video, you know. Um I really doubt legal legal would strike you. Best not to risk it. Anyway, yeah, it's pretty insane. Um Jesus. Brown, 46, had an unspecified chromosomal deficiency disorder, a developmental delay, and a mild intellectual disability. Who let who let this mother near the caffeine lemonade? Is, is there anyone watching him? Hello? He lived independently? Oh, okay. Panera has advertised its charged lemonade as plant-based and clean with as much caffeine as our dark roast coffee. What? As much caffeine as our dark roast coffee? Does their dark roast coffee have 390 milligrams of caffeine? There's no way. They like dropping two espresso shots in there too? So more than any size of their dark roast coffee. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a f***ing lie, I think. Why are they calling it plant-based? What does that mean? It's, it's lemonade with caffeine. Like, th what, what about that isn't plant-based normally? Isn't caffeine from... The, the 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 beans it's, it's beans lemons like what, what okay plants were involved yeah okay it's for vegans it's lemonade you yuppie buzzwords i don't know 
Yeah, I, I hope they get slammed here. First of all, caffeine is addictive. The reason they're putting so much caffeine in this is because it makes it addictive. You know, um, it's not quite like sprinkling meth into your food, but honestly, it's, you know, a teeny bit. Yeah, um, it, it is a drug. It has a chemical effect in your brain by putting a ton of caffeine in there. It jumps you up. It makes you feel good. Uh, you know, it's so like that is why they're dumping so much in there. It's, you know, that's the. It is, didn't know that. Yeah, it's a drug. I mean, it affects your your brain. Yeah, people can get the substance dependency. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's all possible. It has a ton of it. Are you an addict? How long can you go without coffee? I like having coffee, but I've gone days without it. It doesn't really bother me. But I, I think that a lot of people develop a light caffeine addiction, and it's kind of okay. As addictions and dependencies go, caffeine is a relatively light one. Obviously, there are always going to be people who are like, hopelessly addicted to basically anything, but I think that for the most part, caffeine is a relatively okay effect on people. However, dumping a ton of it into your lemonade is very obviously an attempt to sort of chemically bait people. Caffeine is a stimulant. Yes, it, it interacts with ADHD differently. Yeah. Vosh, the 390 milligram serving is for a 30 ounce large. This is America. The only size you can get drinks in is 30 ounce large. That's it. Um, anyone who says otherwise is lying. That's the only valid size. The problem with any of these substances is irregulated dosage. Dosage, yeah, it's it's just it's difficult, you know. On one hand, I like the idea of companies being able to make insanely unhealthy shit and throw it at people. The problem is, like, I also don't. Uh, people often don't have a good understanding of the products they consume, and we don't expect people to. We have safety regulations so that people don't need to be electrical engineers to rewire a socket, so that we don't have, you know, that's why we have, like, grounding cables and stuff. Like, like everything that we build, everything that we interact with, everything we engage with, we're trying to minimize accidental death. And we do the same thing with our food. If you want to make, um, like, a 5 trillion milligram caffeine drink, you can easily, at home, just buy some caffeine and put it in lemonade. You can do that. It's not illegal. I don't recommend doing it, but you can. But for the most part, when people go outside and they go to their local store or whatever, people don't look at the food and products there as a health hazard the way that, well, the way that they used to, you know? Back in the good old days, back 100 years ago or whatever, you know, before modern safety regulations were really a thing, you could go to any restaurant and get something built 50% from rat shit. You have no idea. They're putting meth in this. They're putting cocaine in that. The This person, you know, rubbed their steak on the kitchen floor before serving it up. Like, you have no idea. There's no standard. You have no clue what's going on. And people died a lot those days. And then a doctor would show up and be like, yeah, this person died of wasting disease. It's because uh, it's because their wife nagged them too much. And then they would go and leave and eat an apple or something, you know. Uh, it is a good thing that products are being made safe and sanitized for people. If you want to, to live on the edge again, if you want dangerous products, if you want the kind of things that they can't serve you in restaurants, you got to make them yourself. And that's not illegal. That's the thing. It's not illegal to make a super caffeinated drink. You just have to make it. It's not hard to. Uh, it's not illegal to serve a person a super crazy, unhealthy, whatever. Like you can make whatever you want at home. I think that's okay. Vosh dark roast, 16 ounces, 380 milligrams for, uh, for Starbucks. I didn't know dark roast had that much um, caffeine in it. That's crazy. Clover dark roasts, venti, 20 floral oun uh, 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 fluid ounces, 470 milligrams on the clover roasts. It's a lot. Light roast has more caffeine than dark. Tell Starbucks that. What kind of coffee do you drink? Keurig cups. I think they're fine. Just use some nice half and a half and a little bit of creamer, a little bit, and that's uh, fine. I don't care enough about coffee to, like, do the whole, like, grinding up bean shit. I wake out of, I, I get up out of bed, I wake up, like, right before stream. I stay up till 3 a.m. every single night. I, I'm not gonna, like, go down there with a towel wrapped around my waist and be like, okay, time for me to, like, grind the beans, do the thing, the thing, the other thing, wash this, clean that every day, blah, blah, I'm, I'm not doing that. Try getting an AeroPress? No. We should probably make it illegal to sell refined caffeine, but I like energy drinks. Yeah, whatever. Have you thought about caffeine pills? Yeah, but I like drinking coffee. It's like tasty, you know? You seem like a macchiato person. Cappuccino, actually. The smell of coffee is good. The smell of coffee is unrivaled. 